you want to hold the real stuff. <laughs> yes, exactly. What do we say as stackers? If you if don't hold, hold it, it you, you don't, don't own, own it. it. Beautiful. Period. So Lynette, when does this manipulation, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. end? When does it end? When does real price discovery happen? Buy your precious metals online from SD Bullion. New customers get gold and silver at spot by visiting sdbullion.com slash new. Hi, Lynette. So great to see you again. Oh, it's good to be here, Yankee. Thank you so much. It's been too long. We, we shouldn't wait this long. Yeah, I think the last time we spoke was July of last year. <laughs> Yeah, uh, and a lot's happened since then. <laughs> a lot, indeed. Let's uh, let's start with gold and silver, right? So why is the yellow <laughs> metal up? Because it's a trader's market, and and of course, gold is the primary currency metal, and frankly, it's severely undervalued, even as it's up on the spot market, because that's just a contract. In the physical market, it's up a whole lot more. With silver, it kind of straddles two fields. So it straddles the industrial part and then also the monetary part. And if we look at what's happening on a global basis, much as they're trying to tell us soft landing, uh, we're in deep doo-doo. So uh, I think that's one of the reasons why. But I think another reason in terms of silver, see gold does not get used up in production. So we can account for like 98% of all the gold that's ever been mined, silver does get used up. And we've already seen that, like on the silver ETFs, that they can't fill their baskets, right, mm -hmm. with physical silver. So they had to actually change their prospectus so that all it has to do is reflect. So, But silver is incredibly yeah. undervalued. Would you agree? I, I, I think that both of these assets – these real tangible assets mm -hmm. are both extremely and severely undervalued. And yes, I absolutely agree with you, Yankee. Actually, let's talk about silver for a minute because a lot of people okay. love stacking physical silver. Mm -hmm. uh, the deficit in silver between supply and demand uh, was about 140 million ounces in 2023. And when you mm -hmm. add the deficits from 2021 and 2022, we have a deficit of about... 474 million ounces of physical <laughs> silver. I mean, that average is roughly 15% of the total annual silver production of just over a, a billion ounces of silver. That's a big gap, Lynette. How can the price of silver remain so low with such Love a huge gap? Question. Such a good question, Yankee. Because in the paper markets, in the spot markets, they can create as, as much silver that does not nor ever will exist that they want to and control 500 ounces or 5,000 ounces of silver for what, 150 bucks or something ridiculous right. like that? Yep. And, and they don't want the public to be buying the physical markets. Absolutely everything has been turned into a trading market. You're, you're not going to get real price discovery in a trading market. You only have that in a true supply and demand market, a physical market. It reminds me of the dangers of uh, hypothecation. Okay. <laughs> yes. So, so for people who might not know what that means, it's like when an asset is being used as collateral for a loan. So in other words, if you, I don't know, offer uh, an equity loan using gold, you've hypothecated that asset, which means, I mean, you might have a legal claim on the asset, but you don't actually own the asset outright, it's just like a house or a mortgage, right? So if you, right. if you have the title to the property, but you haven't paid your mortgage, it's the bank who's the actual owner of the property through hypothecation, and they can take it away from you, right? Yes, they can. And rehypothecation, Lynette, as it relates to precious metals. That's when the institution with whom you're maybe storing your gold or silver, the gold that or silver you, you might think you outrightly own, they lend mm -hmm. that out sometimes to more than just one borrower at a time. Yep. They're rehypothecating mm -hmm. it. I don't think people get this. I don't think people who invest no. in like SLV or some other ETF know this. 
No, I am certain that they do not. And if they do that contract through the city of London, mm. there are actually no limitations on how many entities can rehypothecate that same asset. And and all we really have to do is is remember back to 2008 mm. with the financial crisis. And let's see, who went to jail on Wall Street? No one. Because what they did was not illegal. It was it was immoral. It was evil. It was unethical. It was many things, but it was not illegal. How come it wasn't illegal? Because guess who wrote the contracts? <laughs> you know, it, it does make people really question the accuracy of what's you know publicly available for like silver inventory, say the statistics that we see. And right. it really raises the whole big question, Lynette, of manipulation. Let's let's take <laughs> let's take let's take JP Morgan Chase for a minute, okay? Okay. <laughs> they act as the custodian of over a hundred million ounces in SLV, the iShares Silver Trust ETF, right? Yep. But at the same time, they reportedly hold about 130 million ounces of silver at the COMEX. Lynette, hmm. Hmm. what's hmm. going on here? Are they, hmm. could they be reporting the same silver bars? Would same they both ever bars? lie to you? No. Can you see Jamie Dimon lying to us? <laughs> Can we see the Federal Reserve? No, they would never lie to us. Mm -hmm. um, although I thought it's interesting that Jamie Dimon just sold some first shares that he's ever sold. In JP Morgan Chase. So, hmm. you know, what do you think he might know that the general public does not know? Good point. And yeah. and by the way, people think that they own that silver in SLV or GLD or whatever. And can you take possession of it? No, but Jamie Dimon can if he wants to access it, right? If they mm -hmm. want, or well, I shouldn't say Jamie Dimon personally. Chase can if right. they want to access it. And we've seen that their trading revenues for the most current quarter from the OCC, Office of the Comptroller of the Currency, mm -hmm. their trading revenues were, I could be off on this a little bit, but I think it was 69.7% of bank revenues were from trading. They make more money from trading than they do from anything else, whether it's silver or gold or stocks or Interest interest rate derivatives Deposits, are the deposits everything are the, right yeah it's right. all about the trades right well the deposits get swept under sub accounts in their name and then they can use your deposits as equity to borrow against so again to your point it doesn't matter what that asset is mm -hmm. it, it is all for the benefit of the banks and for the risk transferring that risk your way. So they can do anything because they're the ones that write the contracts. They're the ones that create these derivatives, you know, which is derived from gold and silver, but then, you know, they can't convert the underlying. It's just everything, everything, everything has been turned into a trading I, I, instrument. I, I can't really call it an asset, but that even includes water, mm -hmm. energy, mm -hmm. Food, you know, everything that we need to sustain a reasonable standard of living has been turned into a Wall Street trading asset. And it, and it, and you can't see any good price discovery there. It's not real. It, yeah, it's, I agree. it's not real, any yeah, of it. We're going to get so to, you want to hold the real stuff. <laughs> yes, exactly. What do we say as stackers? If you if don't hold, hold it, it you, you don't, don't own, own it. it. Beautiful. Period. So, Lynette, when does this derivatives, hypothecation, rehypothecation, manipulation, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. end? When does it end? When does real price discovery happen? When enough risk has been transferred from the few, so from that 1%, from the central banks, from the governments, from the corporations, to the many, to the public, that is when it will become, you watch, too expensive to maintain the lie. And that's when true price discovery will happen. And that's when the rest of the confidence will be lost. Mm -hmm. And you'll see these overnight resets. And that's where the opportunity lies. Oh, if you're in the right asset at the right time.